And now, from the CFTK TV studios, this is Open Connection with your host, Robert Picto. Welcome to Open Connection. I'm your host, Robert Picto. Under the heading of Indigenous People of Northwest Coast on the Canadian Encyclopedia website, it states the primary unit of society everywhere on the Northwest Coast was a large group of kin who usually shared common ancestors. The result was a core of close kin with spouses living together in a house or house cluster under the direction and guidance of capable leaders. On today's Open Connection, a member of the Raven Clan asked for help. I want to save our children because our, our children need um, people to look up to. And um, who else but the chiefs for them to look up to? And I feel the chiefs can start having um, meetings within their own clan about this issue. And I feel that would be the greatest way of um, starting things with the child abuse issues within their own clan. And um, with having to heal, having all that trauma, we all go through trauma from this. And um, I know there's going to be a few people out there that's not going to appreciate what I have to say about this, but it has to be said. Um, there's uh, the ones that are abused, they're only doing what they're taught. And from generation to generation, this has been going on. And now um, it's getting out there more in the public and people are starting to talk about it more because of all the um, going on with the world the way it is. And I've been talking about child abuse here for over 20 years now. And things are finally starting to open up. And I feel it's now up to the chiefs to start talking about this issue. It's a very delicate issue. They're going to be hated, you know, it's just natural. But we all have to remember, these are our loved ones that are doing this, you know. That's my son. That's my daughter that's going through that. And we send them to jail, and that doesn't do any good. They only learn a little bit more in jail on what to do. Either that or they get killed in jail. So that's not an option. And we can't tell the cops either because we don't want our children to be taken away. Can't tell social services either because we don't want our children to be taken away. And I, that's why I feel that we have our own laws to be able to go back on, to say, look at this is our law. This is what we have to do. We do, do not need the outside world to help us with our own problems. We're the only ones that are been, to be able to say, we can heal from this by getting together, by talking together. That's the only way things are going to work out. And I feel with the uh, matriarchs getting involved in this, because it's a matriarchs that are the backbone of every community. All the women are the backbones of any community. And I'm very, very thankful for the help that I'm getting with my beautiful sister and Adina and a few other ones too. And my daughter Frida and her husband as well. I was alone with this for so long. And I know the punishment that your own people can endure on you because of, they're scared of what's going to happen with their families. We all have to be able to talk about it within our own family. 
we can get people out there, like we can get um, uh, healing places for them to go. That person can go there if we can talk to them. If they want to go get healing, go. But they, they don't, we can't really, they can get sent to jail then. But that's really not a very good option. There's too many of them in there. we got to think of trying to get all the family of that one person healed. And they can get, go to a, um, like a dry out center and go there for a long time. And then after that, bring the family in and they can all learn together to talk about this one subject so that they can go home and be comfortable in their own community so that we'll be able to be able to stand up and say, I'm okay now. You don't have to be afraid of me now. I'm Open Connection will be right back after these messages. And now from the CFTK TV studios, this is Open Connection with your host, Robert Picto. Thank you for staying with us. Every society in the world, past and present, has its stories and storytellers. Storytelling is an oral sharing of personal or traditional stories and it's one of the earliest art forms. The intergenerational transmission of knowledge was and is integral to the cultural survival. Let us return to the conversation as Sophia shares her truth telling. There's someone out there that's looking after us. I feel it in my heart because there's not just child abuse, there's mental abuse from it and trauma. So much trauma we have from it. We need to have trauma workshops in our community. We need a little bit more workshops to be able to um, learn how to be able to help ourselves with this issue. So that we'll be able to move forward in this world. That's one of the biggest things that are holding the native people behind is because they can't trust each other. There's no feeling whatsoever when they're out there in the world that where they can turn around and help. They're not going to be helping. Oh, I was hurt there. I was molested there. I was shunned there. They're not going, not going to get my help with that kind of an attitude, you know, and they're out there. And we can't have that anymore. We can't have that in our politicians anymore because there's politicians out there as well that are child abusers and they can't hide from it anymore either because lots of them are coming out and saying, he abused me. And what do they do about it? You know, some of them just get a little slap on the hand too. And these are politicians, you know? And you know, there's so many of them that, um, that really need professional help and they don't know how to go about asking because um, there's no really, um, how can I put it? There's no really big billboards out there sort of sign saying, come here to be healed from child abuse. There's nothing like that. There's really big things like uh, for alcohol, you know, drugs, smoking, and, but there's nothing out there. There's not enough help out there for the child abuse issues. All the ones that are selling drugs and whatnot, we have to try to get them help because they, they may um, need love. They never had love and never had good connections with humans. All that does a number on your head 
and they could get um, see if they want to go out to get professional help. Like I say, there's um, there was one incident where we had a um, guy. I don't know, remember what he did, but we put him across the inlet and they left him there and they fed him. But oh, did it ever do a, it? it did a lot of good for him for a really long time. Yeah. And we can do things like that. We can be able to see what we can do about punishment within our own community. We don't need outside help from the police, social workers, or anything else like that, because we can all save our children. And this is going across to all the chiefs across Canada. Even down the states, they can be doing that. Because Canada follows the states with whatever they do. And it would be great if we can all get together on this one subject. Healing. Save our children. Idle no more. Be brave enough to stand up and say, I want to be healed from this I want to be able to stand up and say to my children, now I can save you from this. So we can have a cleaner community and we can have everything step forward and we can all be up there, way up there with everybody else that's out there with doing good things, you know? That's the only thing I feel that's really holding our communities back is the child abuse issues. Open Connection will be right back after these messages. And now, from the CFTK TV studios, this is Open Connection with your host, Robert Picto. Welcome back to Open Connection. Prior to the imposition of Western law, Indigenous communities had to create laws that could at least prevent or at least minimize conflict that arises when human beings live together. Moreover, Communities also need to be able to address the conflict and pain after the incident occurred, which usually took a form of a sanction. Let us return to the conversation as Sophia shares the importance of hereditary chiefs and matriarchs. Those that are not in a First Nations community may not understand um, the importance of, of healing within the community. Why are the, uh, the chiefs and matriarchs so important when it comes to community leadership? Because we elect them there. We're, we choose them out of our, um, our families so that they'll be able to um, provide for the clans. They have, they have really a lot of different people in their clans and they're the ones that are supposed to feed them, clothe them, point them in their rectum right directions so if I had a problem with my son and I didn't know how to deal with him he's our chief I could send him there and say can you help me with this you know give him a spanking if need be you know and help me deal with it in the right direction and send him send him there um, to the matriarchs and they can all get together. We can all talk about how we can help each others with this problem. That's what they used to do when I was younger. The mom and them used to um, have coffee in the mornings and they talk about, oh, this little God, I did this, that, 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 that. How can we deal with it? It's just like I slapped this one girl across the face we were playing and I didn't like what she did. So I slapped her and made her cry. And they all got together about that. And oh, I got it. You know, I really did. <laughs> but we played together after though. They explained really good to me what I did, you know? So that's what I really believe that our matriarchs will be able to do with the generations that are coming up and same with the chiefs as well. And the ones that are, um, that grow up in cities and stuff like that, there's lots of them that don't even know what a chief is. They don't even know where their clans are. 
They don't even know where they're from. I'm calling it the residential school days. And I see quite a bit of them looking around for their families even to this day. I got one of my um, girlfriends, her grandfather didn't know where he was from, didn't know his birthday or anything else like that. So he just went to a clan in Alberta and he asked them if he could join their clan and they accepted him. And that's, that's how, that's why he said, this is my clan, you know, picked his own birthday and everything else like that. And there are people like that to this day on kind of the residential school days, you know, and on kind of the foster care and social workers coming in and taking children, you know. My sister Elsie was apprehended at a young age. And it, it affects us to this day, to this day. I'm affected to this day on kind of the residential school stuff. My grandfather, Elijah Jones, wrote letters to the uh, parliament about the residential school. And they didn't answer him until years and years later. You know, the government knows exactly what they're doing. They say they don't, but they do. They're not going to accept what they've done to us. They never will. It's just like now with this pandemic, they're saying, oh, these children are been traumatized because they're not hugged and kissed and stuff like that. The elders are traumatized because of the way they're not treated right and not getting hugs and kisses and stuff like that. We've been going through that for so many generations, so many generations, and they never acknowledged it, you know? And I wish they'd acknowledge it now, you know? And then they can blame it on the pandemic, whatever they want to do, you know. But I wish they'd admit it. And with all this um, um, trauma with the day school money, the 60s scoop, things like that, that we all have to endure telling our stories. It's good that we can share our stories, though. I heal from sharing mine. Open Connection will be right back after these messages. And now, from the CFTK TV studios, this is Open Connection with your host, Robert Picto. Many things get passed down through families, like heirlooms, genetic conditions, and physical characteristics. In some cases, trauma can be inherited too. In this final segment of Open Connection, Sophia shares how we can break the chain of intergenerational trauma. A lot of them are having problems with the day school money, the trauma they have to endure with that. Sophia, you mentioned that uh, for you to heal, you talked about your pain. Um, and of course, a lot of people have to overcome a shame issue. Um, what advice do you have for them to get over that shame? Yeah, you really have to know how to deal with your own feelings. If you can't deal with your own feelings, you, you have to be able to go out and get professional help with that. That's where the elders come in. You can go to one of the elders and say, I'm having this problem. Can you help me with it? And we should be able to sit there. If I can't provide you with an answer, there may be another elder that's out there that would be able to provide you with that answer. So that's where the other elders can get involved. Like with my sister Elsie here, I'm so very proud of her because she's got life skill training, you know? And she can go out there and be able to be a really big help to the younger generation. And I'm always bragging about how proud I am of her because of how hard she tried for her life to where she's at now. I'm very proud of her. We clown around together. We're called the naughty nannies. <laughs> I got this lady's fat suit. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah, but that's that's the only answer I can give them. And they have to also have faith too. That's the biggest thing is to have faith. Yeah. Mm. And the ones that don't have faith, they can still just go and ask for help with the elders. That's the only answer I can give them. So with the 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 chiefs and the and the elected leaders, what do you want to tell them? Just stand up and be honest because that's the only way our world's going to be able to function. You have to be able to um, take ridicule. You have to be able to stand up to um, everything that's pushed at you without lashing back at them. Lashing back at them is not the answer. It doesn't help any. You have to be able to have the patience with your own people. That's why I say you always have to have a really good grip on your own feelings. My grandfather taught me when I was really, really young on how to deal with my feelings. So I'm, I'm really ha happy he did that because I don't panic. I jumped out a house fire and um, smashed nearly every bone in my body. And I didn't panic. And I, I really, I'm always thankful to the Lord that, on account of that. Yeah, he, he was the one that saved me. My husband, I, I tied up a bunch of um, sheets and stuff like that. And I threw it out the window and would put clothes on there because of the broken glass. And I'm hanging on to the sheet, hollering at my husband, tie the sheet to the bed, tie the sheet to the bed. But he didn't, you know? And I'm hanging on to it like this while my son is climbing out. And what does he do? He climbs right out after my son. And I thought, wow, okay. Anyway, I was, I was like this, I was gonna, I tied the sheet to the bed. And then when I ran to the window, I was gonna um, climb out. I was just on the window cell and then what they call a backdraft hit me and I went flying out, right out and I landed and I landed really good on my, my um, rear end, smashed uh, both feet, hairline fracture up my spine. And I, I'm lucky I'm alive, I really am. Thank my, my niece, Adina here too. She's a matriarch and she's brave enough to stand with us. And I'm very, very, very proud of her. Thank you for joining us for this episode of Open Connection. The greatest distance in the existence of man is not from here to there, but the connection from his mind to his heart. If we can conquer that distance, we can soar like an eagle and realize our mercy within. I'm Robert Picto.